in their various health facilities. So once this charter is in place, we should follow them duly. And once we follow them, we can manage our patients very, very well. So that is the patient charter. What is it? So please take your time and read comprehensively about the patient charter. They are pasted on the walls when you go to the various various hospitals. The patient charter is displayed everywhere. So this is your take-home assignment. Read comprehensively about the patient charter. What is it and what are the indications? I've, 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 I've briefed you already. They are the rules and regulator governs how we should handle patients, definitely into consideration uh, their background, their beliefs, and everything. Individually, what they hold on to. No discrimination, no biases. We should respect them as an individual. These are the things that have been combined into the patient charter. And that helps you to manage the patient very, very well on the walls or in the hospital. So we are consumers becoming more interested and knowledgeable about health promotion as well as disease prevention. Yes, now patients who are not even uh, health uh, inclined are able to put preventive measures in order to prevent certain conditions. And they have read and they have acquired so much knowledge into their conditions. And they are, you, can, you can hear some of these things on the various radio stations, especially, uh, especially if you listen to UTV every Saturday, they have health programs every morning. They have the, 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 the rep from the health facilities visiting them, educating the public on the various health issues. These are what we call health promotion, as well as disease prevention. It goes together. Once you are well informed, you'll be in a better position to prevent certain diseases from happening to you. Initially, you were not in the norm. Now you are knowledgeable. Now you are in the norm and you can know the do's and then the don'ts and prevent certain uh, conditions that would have been uh, inherited or that would have been uh, uh, infected if you were not having the knowledge and then the idea. Now you are well informed on the various radio stations, the FM stations, every now and then there are health personnel who are on the radio stations educating the public about certain topics in health. So that is what we call health promotion and disease prevention. People are becoming interested, especially the aged, especially the uninformed. They learn so much from the media stations. There is increased acceptance and demand for alternative and complementary health options. Of course, in the olden days or gone are the days where patients have no other option but to go to the health facilities and queue. Whether the nurse insults them, whether the doctor insults them, they have no option. The only option available is to make sure that they remain quiet and receive treatment, whether they like it or they don't like it. They have to be quiet and accept whatever is given to them. The story is different now. The story is completely different. What is different now is they have options. They have available alternatives. They have the alternative complementary health options. The health and the other health bar preparations are in place. The good ones, they know. And they have established a very, a very, a very complex facilities that were not available to them in the olden days. Now, if you visit some of the health or the herbal centers, you will be amazed. The kind of diagnostic machines they have, the kind of staff they have employed, the kind of specialists they have at the various herbal centers, you have no idea. And all this is to diagnose them well. And they have very good preparations to treat conditions, not from the orthodox point of view, but from the health point of view. Majority of them are not doing the, the right thing, but at least quite a number of them are doing very, very well. They have well-established facility. It has been inspected by the inspectorate authorities, and they have accepted the facility. And the, these, some of the facilities are even air-conditioned. For patients, and you have a very good OPD systems with televisions and other things, just like even gone ahead of the orthodox uh, uh, facilities. So these are the challenges posing to the orthodox facilities. 
Now, these helper centers are on the various radio stations, educating people, advertising on their facility, and it is becoming more attractive to the public. And you go to the health centers, you have, you have seen the number of patients patronizing these facilities. And they entertain them. They accept them. They don't shout on them. They give them preferences, which were not available to them previously. These are the demand. These are the pull and the push factors pulling patients into these health facilities and the health centers. We should be ready to have options. We should be ready to have alternatives. Nurses must be prepared. So if you are a nurse, you must be prepared to work into any of these disciplines. If you are a nurse, you can find yourself in the homeopathic clinic. You can find yourself in the allopatric area. You, you, the nurse must be ready to learn because your area is not only restricted to the bedside. So the nurse must be prepared to understand this change relationship and be skilled in helping patients and families to maximize opportunities to manage their health. If a relative comes to you to ask you about certain options, you should be in the know. You should have adequate knowledge to have these relatives and the family members to make their choices best suit them. Before you can do that, you should be knowledgeable about the changing trends in terms of healthcare. Now, collaboration. Nurses with more education comparably to physicians and other interdisciplines. Reforms in healthcare and higher education. Graduate education producing practitioners to meet consumer demands. Look, initially, what was the mindset of the health team, especially the doctors, about nurses. The nurse's job is to finish training and probably do either nursing or trying to do midwifery, that post, post, post SR and midwifery. Now, what is happening? I remember way back at Tech, Tech KMUST, it took Professor Abe Agbeniku to dialogue aggressively with other doctors, they didn't see the reason why nurses should do degree. The nurses said, the doctor said, ah, but why should the nurse come and do degree? And Prof. Abe stood on his feet to challenge them that let us allow these nurses to come and do first degree because he had the opportunity to learn outside. And he knew that outside, the lowest level of education is first degree for both or for all health Personnel. And at the time, we were doing SR, not even diploma. We were doing SRN before we moved to do diploma. And now, Prof. Agbe argued sensibly that no, these nurses need to do their first degree. It was a tack of war. It was a tack of war at KNUST, School of Medical Sciences. Why the nurses should do first degree? Meanwhile, they have the laboratory technologists who were doing first degree. They didn't see anything wrong with that. They had the, the, the sports and exercise science who, was also, who were also there doing their first degree. They didn't see anything wrong with that. They have the health and medicine who were doing their first degree. They didn't see anything wrong with that. But they saw something wrong with nurses coming to do first degree. And Prof. Agwe stood on his feet. That time he was the dean of medical school. And he argued his way out and said, no, we will allow these nurses to come and do their first degree. They are going to help us when they are knowledgeable. They are going to help us to manage patients effectively. And he was successful and the Department of Nursing was established. At that time, Legon had already started. But Legon was doing more of Ah, uh, uh, more of a uh, humanities. They were not doing the science 
Vastek was only admitting. Tech was only admitting the science students. So now education has become more and more intensive. And this is helping manage patients very well on the world. Look at the establishment of Ghana College, Ghana Nurse and Midwife Council. They have established the Ghana College of Nurse and Midwives, and now they are doing various specializations. These people are coming out. These people are coming out to maximize patients' care and give a comprehensive care to patients. They do a lot of specialities, critical care nursing, they do oncology nursing, which initially was available to uh, nurses from South Africa. You have to send your client to South Africa for them to, to specialize in these areas. Orthopedic nursing, urology nursing, neuroscience nurse specialist. These specialities are available. And it's going to add up to patient care. It's going to augment the doctor's care to make sure that patients are given the quality of care that they need. What about the doctors? They have established the Ghana College of Physicians, Ghana College of Surgeons. And initially, these doctors were moving to the Western world, Europe and America, to get these specialities. Now they have established these centers during the previous administration. President Kofu helped establish these uh, uh, centers, specialities, to help the doctors specialize. And that helped to retain them here. When they go, they don't come back. But now, when they specialize, they're able to remain here and help the patients. So that is how education and uh, interdisciplines are combined to help these uh, patients manage very, very well. The nurses are doing their own, the doctors are doing their own, the other uh, uh, other additional health team are also doing their own. The physiotherapists are also educating themselves higher and higher. All is to augment the patient care. Now, we have what is called extended and expanded rule of the nurse. Extended and expanded rule of the nurse. What is the extended expanded role of the nurse? So the introduction So yes I'm reading some charts here from AJ Grace Deborah He says said now medical laboratory is 7 years apparently after it they they become doctors in medical laboratory fantastic that is what they are doing thank you uh, uh Deborah thank you so much for this Laboratory science. Could there be a negotiation for nurses as well to become doctors in certain specialties of ours? Of course. If you travel to Alps, Europe, and America, they have nurses who are doctors in their area. They also go the seven years and they become doctors in their area. For example, if you are orthopedic nurse, you go seven years, so you become orthopedic nurse, doctor, orthopedic nurse at the area. These are available options. We shall get there very soon, Deborah. We shall get there very soon. It started from somewhere and we are moving on. That is very good uh, contribution from Deborah. Thank you so much. So nursing is the largest of the healthcare profession. 
and nurses are at the forefront of healthcare battles. Yes, if you go to the health facility, you can imagine that if you want to number the number of healthcare personnel in every department, nurses will outnumber all of them. We are the largest in terms of numbers in healthcare. And we are the forefront of healthcare battles. During the COVID-19, I can imagine, everybody was there, but nurses were more. But when it comes to their contributions have always made significant difference for patients, of course. I quite remember the incident that happened at Mencia Health Center or Mencia uh, District uh, Hospital. When a doctor mistakenly wrote a diagnosis, a medication diagnosis error for a patient, and it was a nurse who stood on her ground that I will not administer this medication. The doctor should come and change it, else I will not. And that led to a whole lot of insults on this nurse, poor nurse, because the father was backing the daughter who was a medical officer, simply because the medical officer can never make mistake. But that mistake was so gross, was so uh, 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 big that you can't hide it. Prescribing diazepam 125 whatever milligram for a child would have killed the child instantly if this nurse had not stood up on her feet. So the nurses make a significant difference for patient's care, and that is true. Nurses have seen many changes in their roles, of course. Now our roles have changed. It's not only at the bedside and what the doctors say, but also what I think what we do can help the patient. And that is a very good stakeholder participation. Initially, nurses would just put their hands at the back and listen to the doctor as an instructor. We are not saying that don't take the doctor's instructions. It's one of our rules that we should take doctor's instruction. But we can also make decisions. That is what I mean. We can make effective decisions to, to even help the patient better. Initially, our decisions were hidden. Sometimes we know what to do, but the doctor, in the absence of the doctor, we decide what we want to do and help the patient. The doctors will come and claim the glory. Harina. Let me let me hear from you. Your hand is up. Let me hear from you, Helena. Okay. Good morning, sir. Please, Good with morning. what you are saying, I agree with you. But me personally, I said I won't play any doctor's role. There was a day a patient came. I saw the patient anemic, so I decided mm -hmm. to take some for including grouping and cross matching. So mm -hmm. I alerted the doctor that oh, he should make the request. Once he mm -hmm. didn't suggest that I should take that sample, yes. he said he would make yes. the request. So. Mm -hmm. I told the patient to you send it. I'll call the lab. Then mm -hmm. the doctor said it's no needed. So I kept quiet. Oh, okay. When they went, the mm -hmm. man's age was 5.3. Mm -hmm. And the doctor now came to tell me to take this. I said, I won't take. Mm -hmm. I said, what I took, I've discarded it. And I won't go there to break the man again. Fantastic. So it became an issue between myself and him. Yes. You see, my sister, what is your name again? Uh, Haruna. Har so Haruna. Haruna. Very good. Yes, sir. Look, Haruna, this was one of the reasons why I didn't keep long at the health facility because I was trying where to work with you. I will not be afraid of you. I will tell my mind, and they don't want that. They don't want people who are upright. They don't want people who know their left from their right. You were right from the initial. The doctor would have eaten the humble pie by accepting your decision. I say, my dear, it's a very good decision. Can you please take the sample and let's take and see the HP and let's quickly, because from your clinical experiences, from your clinical signs and symptoms, you don't only need the HP to tell you that the patient is anemic. We have other signs and symptoms. What are they? The conjunctival looks pale. The patient is very anemic from head to toe, you could see. So what was the doctor hesitating for? What was the doctor waiting for? Just that they think nurses don't know anything. They need to change their mindset. They need to renew their minds. Nurses now know their left from their right. They must stand very, very well. Yes, let me hear from you. Some of you, your hands are up. Yes, let me hear from you. Okay, so this is Richard. Yeah, very good, Richard, yes. 
So it is a concerning what uh, sister just said. It does happen most of the time. Sure. But you see, there is this unanimity between the doctors and the nurses. And as you are saying, because of this advanced education and knowledge yeah. nurses are gaining right now, That's they have right. a lot of knowledge on things. But one particular problem I've also realized from mm -hmm. our side is sometimes how we communicate this part of our knowledge to them. Sure, and sure. Sometimes you need them to be, feel like there's a challenge. The doctor said if you want to be, challenge them with other opinions that instead of yes. trying to sit down with them and go to our concise agreement with them, we tend to make it feel as if we now know more than they do. And when it does okay. that, we could always want to show us so that they are always on the top before we came. So that's what brings that disagreement. So although we know that then I think if we find proper means into of communicating to them, to them yes. team, I think they will accept us too. Sure. I think it's a wonderful contribution from Richard. It's true. Sometimes we need to communicate effectively with them. Oh, uh, I think that it could have been more effective or more better if the nurse had gone to her to say, or to him to say that, please, I'm seeing this patient. Can we suggest some investigations for them? If, 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 if you agree, I will take the sample and let's see the, 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 the level of the HB, probably including cross matching if in need, the HB is low. I think every renowned doctor when in his or her right senses will not challenge you. So uh, let us also mind our, our mode of communication, as Richard has said. Let us try as much as possible to always uh jaw with them and do suggestions rather than imposing our ideas on them. That is also true. Yes, Juliana. Let me hear from you, Juliana. Okay. Um, sir, and I also think that during ward rounds, sometimes our behavior towards them too, mm -hmm. when uh, we ideally we are to go with them, but sometimes yes. we leave them to go to the patient themselves. And when no, they come to write, we that are rather wrong. giving them suggestions. That no, one, that is wrong. Take it. No, Juliana, we should, we, we should join ward rounds. From, mm -hmm. from what I know, from the various practice, from my experiences, doctors go don't go to ward rounds alone. We join them and even write down the changes in the changes book and make them implemented. So it is wrong to leave the doctors alone during ward rounds. So I think on this note, we will all have to advise ourselves if we don't join them. Okay. Okay, from, from her nurses, some of them uh, however, could put it, they just get irritated and nurse say something. Yes, yes, yes. So, so there are individual differences. There are individual differences. Once, once, once you suggest, uh, and then they take. That's fine. If they don't take, I uh, mean, we move on and do the right thing. Always make sure and get bear in mind that the patient is always the patient is always your 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 your. You are advocating for the patient. You should always make sure that that you are the mouthpiece of the patient. You are the patient surrogate, and you always stand in for the patient. Don't mind what the doctors may say or may tell you. Take it if it is good. If it is not good, just uh, just just decide on what can help the patient well. Yes, yes. To become doctors in a various discipline, sure. So I think uh, uh, we will get there. We will get there when the nurses climb up from first degree, for, for four year first degree, you do straightforward seven years in a certain discipline, not you're coming out as general nurse, but you do the seven years in a specific discipline. You can do the first four years and then the last three years you specialize to become doctor in that area, doctor of diabetic care, doctor of orthopedic care, doctor of hypertensive care, and this can give a very... You see, the doctors are afraid. I told you, initially, they don't even want us to do first degree. And we, 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 we helped ourselves. We prayed. We pushed. And now we have done first degree. Now we have done our master's. Now, most of us are doing PhD. Others have finished their PhDs. A lot of nurses have done their PhDs. And they are doctors on their own. But what we are suggesting now is not coming out of PhD when you are a general nurse, but after the first four year first degree, you specialize into one particular area and you go up to become a doctor in that area, specialty. 
and that is yet to happen. Imagine we have some of these nurses in the various departments, diabetic center, hypertensive center, how would they augment the doctor's care? It would be very, very fantastic. All right. Innovations in healthcare, expanding healthcare systems and practice setting, and the increasing needs of patients have been as a stimulus for new nursing rules. So because of innovations, because of healthcare expanding and the various uh, 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 increasing needs from patients, our role as bedside nurse have changed. It's not always the bedside nurse. Now we are moving into the communities. We are moving into the other disciplines to give healthcare. It's not only restricted to the hospital on the bedside. Health is considered as fundamental right of individual. Every individual has a right to receive health care. Every patient, every individual. If you deny anybody of health care, you are infringing on the right of that particular patient. To provide the population with broad access to basic health services, nurses have to carry out a wide range of functions, especially in underserved areas like the rural se sector, remote regions, and the urban areas. Right now, if you go to most of the rural areas, these people there are nurses and midwives. The doctor don't want to go there. If you post them, they say they won't go. The nurses are there. They've been doing everything possible they can to save lives. They are there together with their midwives as hospital managers, as laboratory managers, as consulting room managers, as the dispensary managers, as everything. They are there in the rural areas and we are doing all things possible to save the lives of human beings. The doctors are refusing to go. Now, when the nurses go there and the place become popular and people start patronizing, then they start seeing the need to put a medical officer there, mm -hmm. which initially they have refused to go. The transition of healthcare system from a disease-oriented model to health-oriented model is an emerging trend. Now, the story is different. The mindset is different. We are moving from waiting for the patient to get sick and giving a curative care to going to the patients in their communities, in their homes, to educate them on the various health problems before they get sick. When you give them this information, they get knowledgeable, they can prevent certain diseases from occurring. This will transcend into patients not falling sick and congestion in our health facilities. And this is what we mean or what we say we are moving to the health-oriented model. The patient is healthy. Give them the health education. Promote health to them. They will be knowledgeable. They will, they will prevent certain diseases from occurring. They will know how to wash my hands from the food wrap before I eat or I breathe so I don't transmit infection from the funeral grounds to my colleagues in the communities. When they are well informed, they will know that after visiting the farm and spraying on my crops, I need to wash my hands very well. If possible, take a bath before I start going to prepare food for my household. When we are able to promote health to our community members, they will be knowledgeable. They will stand a very good position to prevent certain diseases from occurring. If the community is well informed about what to eat and what not to eat, about what to avoid, what not to avoid, what to embrace, how to exercise, and the extent we've been exercise, what to eat to build my hemoglobin levels, they will not become anemic and go there to receive blood. If I'm able to educate my community members, if I'm able to send health promotion to their doorstep, oh. how to prevent mosquito bites, how to reduce mosquito breed in my household, in my environment, they will not fall sick of malaria and the under five will not become malnourished and anemic and die. 
moving from disease-oriented model to health-oriented model is the emerging trend. Traditionally, the next rule was restricted to bedside care only, but now the story is different. We are moving into the communities. We are moving into the various disciplines. We are moving into the industries. Importance or the need for expanding and extended rule of the nurse. The new healthcare consumer is a patient who may seek healthcare at home. So the patient should be able to get healthcare at home, at workplaces, or in any type of healthcare against. The patient can decide to get healthcare in these areas, not only at the hospital. Expansion of scientific knowledge and the application of this knowledge to diagnosis and treatment has led to much advancement. So once we are able to learn, once we are able to educate ourselves, once we are able to uh, uh, specialize into various disciplines, it will lead to advancement in healthcare and the patient quality of health will be improved. Patient can live a fairly productive life with artificial parameters, organ transplants and radiotherapy. I bet you, conditions that people have died would have died in Africa here. They are surviving elsewhere in Europe. They are surviving elsewhere in America. They are surviving elsewhere in Asia. In Africa here, they would have buried long time. Go to Europe and see. People are walking about with uh, 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 oxygen tanks in their suits, in their chairs. They are receiving oxygen administration as they move about because their lungs, they have smoke and their lungs are all destroyed. They are on oxygen. In Africa here, we would have died a long time. People are living with artificial parameters. The artificial pacemaker is inserted at the SA node and is transmitting very good impulses, giving good contractions of the myocardial muscles and there's good cardiac output. They are living. In Africa here, they would have died a long time. So people are living productive life with artificial parameters. People are having organ plants, such as liver transplant, the heart transplant, the kidney transplant. People are receiving radiotherapy to treat certain cancer cases, and they are living. In Africa here, yeah, they will have died a long time. Therefore, there is the need to expand nurses' room to face new challenges. In providing comprehensive care to patients, this is our focus. Learn, specialize, improve your knowledge so you can provide comprehensive care to patients. And this can promote their longevity. This can promote their longevity. <laughs> And the traditional nursing system, practice area, highly talented nurses were removed from direct patient case by promoting them to administrative post. Yes, when you become more experienced on the ward, the administrators take you from the best side and give you administrative positions. So we're not having the experienced hand to give comprehensive care to patients. And there were no experts to address the more complex issues in patients' care because they have been taking the experienced ones, giving them the administrative positions. Advancement and an extended role within hospital and community will help nurses to become experts in patients' care and achieving satisfaction. So once we are able to extend the nurses role by giving them specialities, by giving them more education, do you think that after your first degree, the way you think about patient care will be the same? It will be different because you have learned so much and that's going to influence the way you approach patient care. The way you do your things on the world should be different from a diploma student who has a very little knowledge. If you keep on doing the same thing as they do, then your education for the top up has become useless. 
you should be able to do something different from what they do. Giving them the rationale and the reason why you are doing A, B, C and not what they think it should be. That's to meet the changing healthcare needs of the people, extended and expanded role of the next is very essential. Yes, once we want to meet patients, changing healthcare systems, once we want to satisfy our patients in terms of healthcare, we need to extend and expand our role as nurses. So let's look at this another meaning of a role. A role is the sum total of expected behavior and the behavior expected from a person who occupies a particular position and status in a social pattern. So your role with respect to the position that you occupy, your behavior with expected outcome, your attitude, the way you do go about things with regards to your position that you occupy in the social pattern. And this is what some people are saying that Kennedy at Japan, because of the way he has muddied himself sometimes, he doesn't fit that position. So they look at the position, the status as the role is going to assume as a presidential candidate. And this has been what he has done, his behavior, her outburst sometimes. And people are tagging him as if he cannot become the president of the land because they need somebody who is very solemn, very holy, very quiet, like going for a communion to be the president. That is our mindset. And not somebody who can start and fight in the public. No, that is not our mindset. That is, so we see him different. That is a rule. We expect, we, we look at your behavior and relate it to the position you occupy. According to Hardy and Hardy 1988, he said a rule is a set of expected and actual behaviors associated with the position in the social structure. So always you relate the behavior, your sum total, your total behavior to the position you want to occupy in the social setting. That is a rule. So traditional rule, nurses were concentrating in creative aspect maximum. So initially, traditionally, that was what we were looking at. Get sick, come to the hospital, we nurse you, we care for you, then you can get better. If you don't get better, you we, we manage you until you die. Or if you, are not, if you are unlucky, you die there. That was our mindset initially, traditionally. We have to be at the hospital to give care to you. Once you are not at the hospital, we can't give care to you. Expanded rule, it is the one that nurses assume by virtue of education and experiences. So once you expand your rule, then you are assuming a certain position by virtue of education and experiences. So initially you were at the ward, you were at the bedside. Now you have gone for Ghana College of Nursing and Midwife, and now you have gone through perioperative nursing, you have gone through oncology nursing, you have gone through critical care nursing, so your role has changed. You are no more at the bedside. Now you are at the critical care unit because of the experience and the education you have added up. That is the expanded role. So you have expanded your knowledge, but you are still at the hospital confines. I want you to buy into this idea. You have expanded your role. Even though you have changed from the best side to critical care nursing or to a different discipline, but you are still within the hospital confines. Now let us look at extended role. The extended role is to reach out to the community and extend the services to the people. So the extended role is to move out of the hospital boundaries and give care to the community members. So note the expanded and the extended role. Note them, they are different. Advantages and of expanded and extended role of the nurse. 
It provides variety of services for patients of all ages groups, which may be part of hospital or community. Yes. The nurse has added knowledge. The nurse has added some experiences and they can give variety of care. Unlike first, they only know vital signs, medication, urine output checking, bedpan serving, telling patients from side to side. That is it. Now, they can give variety of services because they have added some knowledge. So they can give the services at the hospital and the community because of the knowledge they have acquired. It also enhances clinical decision making. When we when they go for management meeting, the nurses are at the back. If in the hospital position, it is the doctors, the pharmacists who occupy the management position. The nurses are at the back. Now, when it comes to decision making, they are also a very good stakeholder. Now, the nurse manager can speak on behalf of her own colleagues. They can also challenge them for positions because of quality of education. So we are encouraging the nurses to go in for management courses go in for management and administration as a nurse, you can also become the medical director. Now, they are the public health directors at the various communities and the various district directors of health. Because of education, you can go and do public health management and you can challenge them as well. When we expand and extend our role, it provides a great challenge and a great opportunity for the nurses. There are opportunities available. Only that probably don't want to educate yourself. You don't want to expand your knowledge. The opportunities are overwhelming. We provide expert knowledge and a high level of job satisfaction. Once you have the knowledge, you care for the patient and you can see that this is really a good care you have given to the patient. You are satisfied and the patient is also satisfied. It gives complete job satisfaction to the patient. Published evidences show that nurses can be as effective as doctors within her expanded role. If you expand your role, if you extend your role and expand your role and learn, educate and specialize, you can become as effective as doctors in this field. I quite remember when these nurses can graduate from Ghana College, orthopedic nurse, the says from Ghana College, and the way the orthopedic nurse will sit down and crack the client and come out with the diagnosis, the doctor doesn't have that mandate, that knowledge. So they were envious of them and they were rubbing shoulders and fighting them on the world. But they were doing a very good work. So later, they sat down and they saw that, no, these people are not our enemies. They are going to augment the care of this patient to whatever we do. So let us embrace them. Let us accept them as part of us. Gradually, they will accept them on the world. Gradually. Now, extended rule of the nurse. So extended means... We are going to go outside the confines of the hospital. We are going to go outside the boundaries of the hospital and we are going to enter into the communities. Was somebody talking? Yes, I think Jose Joyce, you chatted saying that please uh, can you take the traditional rule again? The traditional rule, I said initially we, we thought that the nurse is only restricted to the bedside, the bedside alone. The nurse is only restricted to the bedside. And aside the best side, you are not supposed to do any other thing for the patient. You cannot give care outside the boundaries of the hospital. 
And that was our traditional mindset. So that was it. So traditional rule was that the nurse should be at the hospital, be at the bedside and care for the sick. But now our, the mindset have changed and we have to educate them at their, at their homes, at their, at their doorsteps. We have to carry the health to them in whatever they are. We have to educate them even when they are healthy. Don't wait for them to get sick before you educate them. So we are moving from the disease-oriented model to health-oriented model where we give them health promotion, health education, so they can change their mindset and do the right thing so they don't fall sick and come to congest the hospital facilities. That was the mindset of the traditional time, the olden days. Okay. The extended role of the nurse. The concept of an extended role means the area to reach out. So we are reaching out to our people in their communities. The role of a nurse in a standard care facility is one that a nurse assumes by virtue of education, type of institution where she is employed and experienced. So that is your role. By virtue of education, you have added some knowledge that you were not previewed. Now you are you are you are you are in the known. So you assume certain positions and you are doing certain things with that experience, with that knowledge. You are going to the community because you have done some level of health promotion, some public health in your first degree, and you know how to enter into the community. You know how to reach out to the chief and let the chief support you to embark on your health promotion activities. Nurses are assuming their roles in a variety of settings, for example, hospital and communities. So our, 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 our area is not only at the hospital, but also in the communities. So definition of a standard of the nest. It is the responsibility assumed by the nest beyond the traditional function of the nest. So the traditional function of the nest is the best side and the hospital confines. But when you assume a certain responsibility beyond the traditional function of the nest, then you are assuming the extended role of the nurse. It is the scope of nursing outside the hospital facility. You can also give that uh, explanation for that definition. Or the functions of nurse that are not specified in the traditional limits of nursing practice legislation. So the traditional limit is the best site and the hospital environment. So you go beyond that. So let's look at examples of extended rule of the nurse. Examples include school health nurse. Yes, you reach out to the community members and enter into the various schools. Then you look at their nails, their teeth, whether they are having any gums problems, uh, tooth decay, Stomatitis, you check ringworm infestations, worm infestations, anemia, and eye problems affecting their education. School health nurse. We are not at the hospital. We have entered into the schools in the communities and we are reaching out to the children in the school. Occupational health nurse. You move into the various uh, 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 facilities. Then you give uh, health on various occupations. You enter into the various industries and you give education on how to prevent certain disaster. Example, when the Coca-Cola was in Kumase at the Brewway area, uh, the Fanta was being made, the Coke was being made, and the people who were close to the heat were allowed to wear white uh, 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 overall. And from time to time, we take them and we check their sperm count. Because if you allow them to remain at the very heat or very high temperature area, it may cause them to become infertile because their testicles don't like too much heat. And these guys were being rotated. They don't allow you to wear them for so long because they think that you may become impotent or infertile. Just that the sperm don't get denatured. They change from time to time. This is the work of the occupational health nurse to do that. Those are the very or the areas where they make clients at the industries. 
the health problems of those who are getting respiratory infections, who are having asthma induced because of the dust that are inhaled. Private duty nurse. You are nurse, uh, your, your duty is a private duty. You are not engaged every day. You are there and when they need you, they just reach out to you and employ you privately to take you as a private home nurse. Now it's becoming more popular in Ghana here. And I can get calls that are looking for nurses to come to the house and give care to their relatives. And they are paid very, very well. They are paid very well. So if we're in the house, look for private duty nurse. It is moving from outside, from Europe, and now it's in Ghana. If Nanado has not employed you, don't sit there and put your hands under your feet or under your thighs. Look for a private duty nurse, and you'll be well employed. You'll be well paid. Home care nurse. They are employed in the homes of the agent and they give care to the agent. If you travel outside, now it is in Ghana here, the agent who are not having relatives around to give care to them, they are taken to the BD center, the home care, and then the nurses can give care to them. They feed them, they bath them, and the hospice nurse, rehabilitation nurse, Then we have the nurse epidemiologist. You are a nurse as epidemiologist, you study the disease pattern and you report the spread of various infectious conditions and you report military nurse. You are a nurse and you are with the military. During their fight or during war, you give care to them. When they are wounded, you care for them. Aerospace nurse, that is you are working with the air flight. When they're disaster, you, 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 you help them. When people are sick, you help them carry from one place to the other. Telling us, like uh, Sister Diana, when we were assessing patients or we were assessing students at the Padoma, Accra, I was meeting them, telling us, Madame Diana, she started this in Ghana, uh, Crystal TV, and she was still the leading role of nursing who are giving education on conditions every now and then. That is Madame Diana. She's doing so well. Disaster nursing, very disaster like what happened in Libya. You know what happened in Libya? Now, I think Morocco and other countries, uh, Haiti and other uh, uh, countries are experiencing different disasters and the nurses are there to help them out. You, you, you give care to the wounded, you give care to the perished or those who are perishing, you give care to those who are sick. Current sickness, you move with the FBI or you move with the, with the, with the Bureau of National Investigation people and then you do forensic studies to help uh, unravel the mystery behind certain deaths. Okay, so the school next. Yes, uh, Ishmael. Ishmael, let's hear you. Sir, uh, please, I want to know about, uh, I want to know more about the telenet. Is it about giving education through the, using the media or uh, something? Oh, you haven't heard about Madame Diana? Yeah, I've been seeing her. I've been seeing her. Oh, yes, on the yeah, the, on the televisions and sometimes mm -hmm. we have telemedicine. There's a difference between telenet and telemedicine. Like the telemedicine, you can it's about the media using different medias to reach out to the people. Okay. They can okay. be at the communities, they can be at the villages, and you can you can you can educate and advise people through the various <laughs> media, not only television, you can use different media to reach out to them by educating them and giving information to the communities. I hope it's clear. OK, OK, thank you. Sir. Yes, other people have raised their Let me hear from you. That is uh, uh, Stanley. Stanley, your hand is up. Le let me hear from you, Stanley. Yes, sir. sir it's about the uh, telemedicine. Uh, yes. Sometimes uh, I had a friend in UK uh -huh. which she said I, I sent me to uh, an old man. So when there is a case, she uh -huh. calls uh, uh, the emergency line, then they give her directives for her to start uh, uh, assessing and attending to the man before the uh, ambulance will come. Sure. So I think that is also part of the telling That's fine. That is that is that is fantastic. That's true. So uh, I quite remember those days that uh, nurses were not uh, available at the various. Uh, at the various health centers. I, 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 I had one of my students who were posted to, I think, uh, 
Kofiase area that time. And once you are there, he gives you a call that say, I have this case at hand. I have this patient with this condition. How do I manage the patient? And I give assistance and I give directives as to how to handle it. And the patient get better. Sometimes do this last for them and do this and do that. These are all tele medicine or telemedicine. So using different media to reach the community is about telemedicine or telemedicine. So we'll look more into that as we move on. Okay. So, um, okay, there's somebody hand is up. Ama, Ama, yes, Ama, let's, yes, yes let's hear you, Ama. Yes, sir. I was telling us, just as yes. you explained, in Ghana currently, we have it at um, Hohoi. Okay. Hohoi. Hohoi Municipal Hospital. So the telling nurses are there. They Very are good. like consultants. Sure. So the health, the health uh, centers or the chief compounds in the catchment mm -hmm. areas. Mm -hmm. If they get a case, you just call. So on the phone with you, they manage the case with you. Very good. On the phone. If it is sure. difficult for you, then as I, they will call an ambulance to pick up the case to the hospital. Fantastic. So currently so, in Ghana, sure, Hohoi is doing sure, telemedicine. Very good. So that's what you have described right now is called telemedicine. Okay. Telemedicine. So it's a combination okay, okay. of the health team. Okay. We have the nurse. We have the, the, the doctors. We have the lab technologists. We have, okay. So Portia, uh, Topi, are you Portia? I'm seeing your post here. I like it. Dear God, today I woke up. I am healthy. I am alive. Thank you. That's your prayer to God. So God should read every day. That's fantastic. That's good. That was uh, from Portia. Portia, that's the prayer to God every morning. So there's no need to say every prayer. It's written. It's there. God will read. That's fine. Hello? Hello? Hi. 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 Yes, Hi. yes. I, I'm waiting for Hi. the... Hi. Yes, Hi. yes. I'm waiting for... Now we have to be co-hosts, to be made co-hosts. So I'm waiting for uh, for, for you, Steve, to make me a co-host so I can start with you. I think the, 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 the network or something happened and I was hooked out. So I have to be made the co-host. So uh, I can share my slides to you. Okay. I hope we can start. Yes. So I think I was explaining certain, somebody was talking. Yeah, who was talking, please? Uh, somebody's hand was up and I called the person. I think that was Amma. Amma, you were saying something. So can we can we hear you so we continue? Yes, please. Sir, uh -huh. I, am, I explained the telling medicine and you said that was telemedicine so that yes, was what you yes. were explaining yes very good so the telemedicine is a combination of the various health team members and they come together to advise as you just or you rightly said when the call comes they look at the area of that particular team and then they give it to you is it a team from uh, maybe the public health perspective if the team from surgical perspective, the surgery, then surgical person will handle, medical person will also handle. If it's about the nursing care, then the nurse will also handle. So it's a team of people who are there to offer advice to the people who are at the unreached area, the hard to reach areas, so they can uh, uh, be, be well informed and do the right thing. If there's the need, as you said, then probably a medication, they will order the uh, what is it? They want to send the medication to them. The the various uh uh what, what what's the name? Uh, ambulances drone. and the drones. Z yes, drone drone. Yeah, the Z line. Drone. Yes, the Z, the drone using the Z lines to send. If it is blood transfusion, they will send the blood to them. If it is about certain medication, they don't have access. They will send the medication through the drones, and these are helping to save various lives. That is that is that is a very good uh, intervention now. So it's all about telemedicine now, telemedicine. So we are saying that the function that the telenurse, the functions in school setup helps the, that the school nurse 
helps in promoting education, educational success by promoting health, intervening actual and potential health problems, like I gave examples. Maybe you have somebody with vision problem and the person is not getting along with whatever is going on in the class. The person is sitting at the back. Now, through screening by these uh, uh, eye nurses or uh, uh, these specialists, they are able to identify a student or a child with a particular health problem, and they can resolve the problem by bringing the child closer and allowing the child may even have hearing impairment. And once they screen them, they may see that this child is having difficulty hearing, and they can assist the child with hearing aid or something. So these are done to enhance and promote educational success. Intervening actual potential help. They, they intervene before the condition gets out of hand. Provide case management services. Sometimes there are cases in the school they can manage themselves, they do it and they manage it for the student. Implementation of school health services. So you are there, you are, you are, you, they are there to implement school health services from time to time and they go places to make sure they cover all the various schools in this community. Now, I don't know whether this thing is going on, whether the public health nurses, it is in the discipline of the public health nurse to do all this. Are they doing it? I don't know, probably you may know. Are they doing it or they are not doing it? Are they doing it? The school health nurses, are they implementing uh, it? Yes, they do it. So now what is happening is that um, in, in my area, like Bogos, mm -hmm. so I'm in with the Western region. Very so good. every secondary school, at the sick bay has nurses. I am at Bogos, so since so that's in secondary school. Very good. At their sick bay. So if sure. the case is above you, then you refer to the that's hospital. That's fine. That's fine. Uh -huh. So it that means that yes, it means but we that are now, working with the public health nurses. Public health nurses, very good. So it means that now they have rather employed the nurses in the schools. These yes. ideas were all brought up as a result of what happened with the lesson we learned from COVID you understand, and other infections. So the nurses are now there with them in the school, and that is a very good uh, uh, services. So I think it's a good, it's a step in the right direction. Now they are there to implement health to them at any point in time. They collaborate with primary care physicians, specialists, and the local public health agencies. As she rightly said, they liaise hands with the various spe uh, specialists. The, the the physicians and then the health uh public health agencies to implement their care thank you very much now we have the occupational health nurse so the occupational health nurse what do they do they observe and assess the workers health with respect to job i gave you an example coca-cola area where they allow them to wear the white overall and rotate them from time to time they also make sure that they are having the, 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 the helmet on, depending upon the nature and the environment they find themselves. They also make sure that uh, their boots and other things are on, their goggles or their spectacles are on to make sure that they don't have anything affecting their eyes. Especially if you go to the welding shops, the metal area where they weld metals, they have to put on the goggles, the spectacles, to shield them from the excessive uh, uh, radiations. They have knowledge about workplaces hazards. So they have learned about the various hazards in the various workplaces. And they go to these companies and these industries to educate the workers on the various health hazards. That's their job. Have knowledge about toxicology. They have learned into toxicology and they can, they can know that Hey, you, the healthcare person working at this radiological unit, the X ray unit, when we measure the amount of rays you have absorbed, you are almost exceeding your target. We need to relocate you from this radiological unit to a different discipline. Then they do that. So, even at the hospitals, they have these occupational health nurses who come there to check the amount of radiation they have absorbed, then they relocate them. They have learned about toxicology. They have learned about so many things, epidemiology and other things. So they give education on various occupations to prevent hazards and other things. Private duty nurse. Private duty nurse. I've already explained. You are one-on-one -on -one at home. 
and privately you are engaged to offer healthcare in a various disciplines. The patient can be a diabetic patient, the patient can be a hypertensive patient, the patient can be any of the neuro neurological condition like Alzheimer's, Huntington, uh, and what have you, multiple sclerosis, whatever. You are there to offer health and nurse to, and you are there to offer health to the patient. You are there to nurse the patient. You are there to make sure that whatever happens to the patient, you take care of it. So you are supposed to be knowledgeable. You are supposed to be experienced enough. Private duty nurse. So I remember last time I was chatting with Dina, and she, she was my junior at school, and Dina told me that you no, know, when she goes back to UK, she she goes back to nursing and studying. So she is a private duty nurse who can be enrolled on as she's ready and can be offered uh, 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 services as she's ready to offer. So these things are private. You arrange and they employ you. So such care is provided individually and in one-to-one -one ratio, as I said earlier, mostly in hospital and nursing homes, present mainly uh, before intensive care units were, were, were formed. So these things were there before forming the intensive care unit, the ICU, where nurses are assigned to individual patients to monitor. The private home duty nurse or private home nurse was there. Also, non-medical care can be provided by the nurse. So not only medical care, the nurse can also assist the patient in other disciplines apart from the medical care. But cannot I, I know a nurse who is in UK who finished Kokofu nursing training and she was moved to UK and she's not she's not employed at the public hospitals. She's not doing private duty nurse. And she's lucky to have been employed by a very rich family. And the, the nurse is caring for the, 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 I mean, the, the mother of the family. I mean, I mean the, 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 the mother is sick and she's in the house and the lady is caring for her. And you will be shocked the amount of money they pay that lady. You have no idea. She doesn't struggle to go into these uh, uh, companies and these agencies. She has been employed privately by a family member and they are taking good care of her. She is there, she takes care of the woman, she baths her, feed her, play with her, and when she prepares the food, she eats some, and she sleeps there. So basically, she doesn't spend, and she's paid. So you can imagine the amount of money she would gather for the month and for the year. You have no idea. So can, cannot provide skilled nursing care. Uh, uh, that is so home care nurse. So there's private duty care nurse and then home care nurse. The home care they are at the various homes where the agent have been put, and then you go there and you offer care to them. You feed those who are supposed to be fed. You bath them, and then you make sure that their med medications are served. You you check their vital signs and take them to the various diagnostic centers. That is the home care nurse. It's gradually coming to Ghana and it's becoming more common in Ghana. So as also referred to as domiciliary care or social care, care provided in patients' home, licensed individual who assess the, indi the individual may be referred to as caregivers. Caregivers assess the individual in bathing, as I said earlier, eating, cleaning homes, and preparing meals. And you eat some. Hospice nurse. So what is it? It's a type of care that focuses on the palliation of terminally ill patients. So those patients who have been diagnosed as a terminally ill patient, for example, if you have cancer of the prostate, at the terminal end stage four, you are only being managed to the time you pass on. And if you're a hospice nurse, you are there to manage these patients until they pass out. These patients are declared permanently ill patients. And they are only waiting for time to come so that they can go peacefully. 
So you are there to entertain them, to reassure them, to hold on to their faith, and to die peacefully. That is your duty. Next epidemiologist. The nurses are a main role to enforce infection control practices. They look at the disease occurring pathways, the spread of various diseases, various infections, how they can contain certain infectious diseases. Especially during the COVID outbreak, the nurse epidemiologists were very hot cake. If you are an epidemiologist, you'll be employed easily. And you'll be paid heavily. So that is what you do. You gather data. You do research. You do survey about how disease spread and how they can contain them. The rehabilitation nurse helps to assist the individual with disability or dysfunction to achieve maximum function. For example, you are being or you have gone through amputation and you are going to learn how to use the ambulatory aids, the canes, and then the crutches. So the nurse will assist you and make sure that you get back to your, your, your previous state. Focuses on self-care that promotes physical, psychosocial, and spiritual health. You become depressed. You are supposed to do this on your own. Now you are not able to do it on your own. Somebody will have to assist you. Psychologically, you are affected. So the rehabilitation nurse also gives psychological care and also pray with you and enforce your spiritual uh, uh, health. So that is what they do. Military nurse. The care given to soldiers, sailors, marine, and airmen. When they get sick, when they are wounded, the military nurse will definitely attend to them. They are commissioned as second lieutenant. And you can imagine the cash they will reap at the end of their month. Aerospace nurses, highly trained registered nurses that provide comprehensive uh, pre-hospital, emergency, and critical care to all types of patients during aeromedical evacuation or rescue operations. So during rescue operations, like the, something has happened, we need to rescue these people from one place to the other. We need to help them and make sure that we, we give a comprehensive care. During emergency, during critical care, somebody can go into coma and we need somebody to help during evacuations or during air spacing or air lifting. They are there to offer various uh, uh, assistance. Telenursing, Madame Diana, uses telecommunication and information technology. So the one who asked the question, it is about information technology and the telecommunication in the provision of nursing services. So the telenursing is geared towards only nursing care. But the one my sister gave as an example around Hohoi is called telemedicine because they have the health team to give a holistic care to people who may need them. People who may call to their centers, they give holistic care. But what Madame Dinah normally do, or what they, she, 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 she normally does on the television is the telenursing, the telenursing geared towards nursing care, education and prevention of diseases. As this when there is large physical distance between patients and then the nurse. When you are not able to assess the client to give health care to them, this can be communicated through uh, the telecommunications and other information technology to assist them in healthcare. Disaster nursing. So during disaster, they are there to assist. They are there to move them from, look at what happened in Libya. I wish you watch the television to see what's happening in Libya. Thousands of people are dead and flooding here and there. You assist them. Those who need health care, you care for them. Those who, who, who need emergency treatment, you offer them emergency. You transport them to the hospitals and give emergency care. They are there to offer these services. Forensic nurse. You work with the FBI or the National Bureau, the, 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 the NBI, and make sure that you do investigation, the first-hand investigation, you do it, and you give report to the court or the judge so that he can act. That is forensic nurse. You learn in forensic science. And now it's now in Ghana. 
I think tech has started studying forensic studies. And if you are a nurse and you go and specialize in forensic study, the security people will rush after you and absorb you because you help them in forensic studies and investigations. I think once one time I communicated to one of the security personnel and he was advising that the nurses should enter into forensic nursing and they will need them in their fold. They need them. In fact, this course is giving you ideas about how you can choose various occupation after you complete your first degree, various specialities. So they collect evidence and give testimony that can be used in the court of law to apprehend or prosecute perpetrators who commit violence and abuse, abusive act. That is their work. They give evidence to that because if you have taken a hold of the client who is dead, the first thing is they will take forensic lab and then they will study, compare with the fingerprint. If it is, and they have everybody's fingerprint. If it is your fingerprint, they will match and they will catch you. So they give evidence to the courts and it can help to apprehend, prosecute perpetrators. Okay. I think next week, God's willing, we will continue from expanded rule of the nest. I wait for your questions and your contributions so we can end this lecture. Yes. Any question or contribution? Yes. Let's hear you. Please, this is Richard. Yes, Richard, let's hear you. So I didn't see anesthesia in among the extended. No, no anesthesia will be part of expanded role of the nurse. Nurse anesthetist okay. is there. We'll discuss that next week. I told you that the extended is going outside the boundaries of the hospital. And anesthesia okay. is still within the hospital. So they are part of expanded role of the nurse. And they are not part of the extended role. All right. Thank you, sir. All right. Yes. Uh, that's Richard. Anybody? Yes. Any other? Can 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 we hear you? Yes. Yes. Somebody said the health and safety tips are given to the workers. Okay. Uh, Okay, any other, any other, if there's nothing, if your questions are answered, if there are no contributions, then we end the lecture and may the good Lord be with us and everyone until we meet again. Have a wonderful weekend. Bye-bye. Amen. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Bye. 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 B